Welcome to Does the Team Think? Hello, I'm Vic Reeves and welcome to Does the Team Think? Where I invite our team of four uncivilised and oafish clowns to answer questions posed by our captive audience of brilliant and sagacious taxpayers. <laughs> That's you. Yes, over here, it's the bell-bottom king, Rod Gilbert. <laughs> over there, it's old magnetic hands, Marcus Brigstock. It's the gravity-defying, peas-pudding-eating, Noddy Holder. <laughs> and finally, the coiled serpent <laughs> with a heart of gold. It's Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> so, I think without any further ado, let's have our first question... And it's from there, the woman there who's just woken up. <laughs> My name is Sheila. Does the team think they have a short fuse? Does the team think they have a short fuse? Well, I prefer a long fuse. It gives me more time to get out of the bank. <laughs> <laughs> but I might be wrong. I get annoyed when I open the, you know, the toilet door. I open the toilet door. I've got a little toilet downstairs. I open the door. And Noddy's always on the toilet. <laughs> you know, messing about with me, lav. <laughs> Putting his hands down there and fiddling about. What Not are you really. looking for, Nod? <laughs> Who knows what he's looking for? Uh, One day he'll find it. When you say it's a little toilet, is it a little toilet room or is it actually a little toilet? It's actually a very tiny toilet. Is it? It's a, little to a toilet for squirrels. <laughs> Noddy, but... No, I'm just kidding. Noddy, you're never in my toilet. What, what? <laughs> only your heart. Do you have a short fuse, Nod? I, I've not got a short fuse. The only time I, I'll get a sh I've got a short f fuse is when the, um, the bills come in and people have left the heating on when it doesn't need to be. I'm like Jim Royal off the Royal Family and so the phone bill comes in. I'll say, who do we know in Glasgow? I go through all the phone bill and everything. I go berserk. Are you that tight? I am very tight. <laughs> when it comes to that, I am, yeah. You're very parsimonious. What does parsimonious mean? Like Tight. a parsnip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so so got, I've got a short fuse so there. Waste. Or... I, I hate anything to do with waste. I'm quite. I'm with you there. Do you waste? What about your peelings? I, I recycle my peelings. What I do re you do with them? I recycle everything. I put my peelings on the compost heap. Oh, good, because you've got a compost heap, of course. I've got a compost heap. So, if, you, if, if, uh, if the ladies and gentlemen who are listening at home haven't got a compost heap, what can they do you with have the peelings? To get a comp you, well, you can put your if... tea bags on there. I've, I've had a theory for 25 years uh, <laughs> that the, the, worst, the worst thing for the ozone layer is cows farting, to, for want of a better word. Mm. And the methane from cows is, causes the biggest uh, hole in the ozone layer. Now, if we could encapsulate that methane from a cow's backside if we could get pipes out of cow's backsides and I put them into to huge India. tanks we could heat the whole country quite frankly <laughs> we could, I'm, I'm serious about this mm. we, so we, that, we could Noddy, save so much so much it's just waste going up there into the Noddy, atmosphere that's because uh, i did spot you last week just <laughs> off the m25 with stuffing a, a, a drain pipe <laughs> of a cow's backside. The only, now it all makes sense. The only thing you have to be careful of is the blowback. I mean, the, the could be blow... So you have to actually... You have to have a filter system worked in. I've, I've been drawing this for years and trying to get it uh, patented. So where do, you, where do you put the cows to kind of gather the methane, then? Well, I, I, well, you have to have them in a field. You, you have to, to have them all connected. <laughs> yeah, we've got it's that far. Same, you could do it the same as milking them. You just need to coax them into a special device. That's a good idea. A sort of spiral So while you're putting they... the thing on the udders, you put sting on the Yeah, they kind of Yeah, but you're they guaranteeing kind of back that they're going to gonna a... break wind at a set time. They're not. That's true. That's well, you have to. And yeah, also, a... apart from an area, what about it? the more solid thing that's going to come through that pipe? Well, that is the problem. You're going to need that more is than, a, problem than a tissue filter system. I've got to devise a sort of filter I've system. I've got to be honest. <laughs> so dreaming. <laughs> Noddy is now describing a flapping mechanism. Correct. It's a paddle. It's a paddle. It's a paddle. A paddle. A paddle. A paddle. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> Blow into this tube. What, what, what do you think about this conundrum? 
Uh, have I got a short fuse? I'm going to forget Noddy's that. You know, I think we've moved on from there. System. Thanks to Noddy's fabulous invention. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it depends entirely on a short fuse. I think every now and then I, I use my patience up and somebody gets it in the neck, and it's always the wrong person. But it's, it, it only happens about two or three times a year, which I don't think is bad. No, that's all right. Maybe it's tonight. <laughs> tonight you could blow Maybe up. Who was tonight. the last person to take the full brunt of the Tarbuck rage? Uh, you know what? Uh, to my shame, it was a woman in the park. She just made the mistake of saying that my dog should be on a lead. And it should have been. And I'm sorry that I shouted that dressed in my woman's outfit. <laughs> right, let's have the next question. Oh, the woman... Is it a woman or a man? I can't quite... It's a man with the nitroglycerine there. Hi, my name's Clive. Does the team think that sat-navs are a good idea? Sat-navs, yes or no? Yes. Uh, I think they're terrific. Um, but... No, they're not. They're rubbish. No, they're not. They're amazing. They're tell me oh, how they good. are good. Explain, amazing. Tell me why a sat-nav is good and not a map. Well, because a sat-nav... Uh, oh, yeah, that's a good point. No, because the sat-nav sits there and you can choose what voice. I have uh, an Australian gentleman called Ken, and he never gets cross. You just, you know, you, you, he says, at the end of the road, turn left. And you don't, he doesn't mind. He just sort of shrugs it off. OK, take the next one. <laughs> I, don't care, I like that. I think... A casual nav. No. Do you know what I think they should do with sat navs? Is have, as you go driving... Let's say we're driving through Britain. That's where we live. <laughs> it changes accent for whatever county or oh, region yeah, that you're going through. So, Noddy, I could be driving, you know, turn left at the building. <laughs> or maybe... And then get out It'd be nice if they threw a few anecdotes in as That's well. True. Right, well, as go, go, up, go up that road, turn left, and I tell you what, there used to be a lovely old pub up there. <laughs> It's not there anymore. Unfortunately, a couple fell out who ran it. Lovely. George and his wife. Marvellous. And they did a wonderful on a weekend. There's a lovely roast. Anyway, ignore that. Go straight on. <laughs> and if you turn left here, you'll, you'll be heading towards Fife. And I must tell you, it's a wonderful little place that you must visit on there. On there. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? That'd be Noddy. Gorgeous. Do you, do you I can't be doing with sat navs. I'd much rather have a map there, something I can hold in my hand, something that's real. While you're driving. And you can read. <laughs> Put it on the wheel there. <laughs> you know, there was a life before something. On the wheel? You know. On the yeah. wheel of your unicycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Solo tape it on and see yeah. what happens. I think they're rubbish. They are rubbish. I love they... maps. Maps are great. Yeah, I'm map with for you. a map. Rod, do they have sat navs in Wales? <laughs> <laughs> do, only if they've gone wrong at Chester. <laughs> Uh, I, I think they're the great... it take you three weeks to read out the names? Yeah, they do. <laughs> That's true. Ken does struggle a bit with Stand By The Post Gwyngis. He does, he does. Gangaras, Windrop, Glendicillio, go, go, go. That was very good. That was very good. Do you know what? I know how you learnt that. I know how you learnt that. How? Because, because your voice is one of the ones, one of the celebrities you can download onto your sat-nav. <laughs> And you had to learn all the places, didn't you? You had to go through them all. I had to read every Single. name in yeah. the world. Yeah. <laughs> How would you like that? Having your own, having your own voice directing you to places? That'd be a bit spooky, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I'd do that anyway. I'd talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the best invention ever. Simply, absolutely wonderful. I would, they've, they've replaced maps and a girlfriend. <laughs> in one That's fell good, swoop. Yeah. Let's have the next question from... The lady with the star-filled beard and the rainbow eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my name's Ruby. What's the best concert the team has seen? Ruby, oh, what's the best concert the team's ever seen? Noddy, did you ever see Slade? <laughs> <laughs> they were good. I would have loved to have seen you're Slade. Never, you're the, probably one of the only people who's never seen Slade. <laughs> I would have loved, loved to have seen this, yeah. Mm. I've, well, I've seen some great acts in my time. The first time I saw ZZ Top was probably very exciting, and Led Zeppelin. But the most unusual, I was never a fan of Pink Floyd, but my manager was a huge fan of Pink Floyd. And he convinced me to go and see him at uh, Earl's Court when they were doing The Wall. And I went to the show, and it was something like I'd never seen before. It wasn't a rock and roll gig, but it was an amazing concert, and I'd never, never understood what Pink Floyd were all about and what people saw in them, but it was an incredible show. Hand on heart, my best concert was Live 8, and secondly, my, it was uh, The Wall, Pink Floyd, at Earl's Court. So, oh, really? The Wall, has anyone else in the audience been to see The Wall? Hey! 
a triumph for it. It was sensational. It was sensational. Mm. Was it good? That good? I didn't go out and buy the record. It was just. It was, I did actually. It I was bought just tickets different. to it, but I was flogged and by some cheapskate, and I actually was shown to a wall. <laughs> And I stared at it for about five hours waiting for something to happen. And nothing did. It's about what the concert was, though. I looked at a bit of graffiti (laughs) that said, Paul loves John. (laughs) (laughs) And that was about it. I thought it was a bit controversial, so I went, Marcus, Uh, what's your best concert? (laughs) Wembley Arena, Neil Diamond, in the round on a revolving stage. Power. Beautiful noise. What an incredibly powerful performer. And the thing I love about a Diamond concert is, as each song begins... (laughs) Diamond concert. (laughs) As each song begins, and the, the punters go, oh, brilliant, sweet Caroline, they get up. But they don't stay up. <laughs> Not for the whole song. They're up for a bit. And then they go, hey, da, 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 da. oh, knackered. And sit, <laughs> sit down again. And uh, that was a good few years ago. My uh, brother went to see uh, Neil Diamond a, uh, a couple of years ago and said something very similar. And, but that every time uh, anybody stood up, there was this old boy at the back who remained in his seat and just shouted, sit down. <laughs> And he can verify that because he's here. And Not the he, old man. Did he ever sing? That's amazing. <laughs> and he's here with Neil Diamond. <laughs> Rod, what's your. You look like a, a, maybe an emo. <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm what, a what's scene your, kid. What's your favourite concert? The Verve or something like that? Uh, shut your face, Vic. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I, I love the verb. I think they're cracking. Yeah, well, you go then. Uh, <laughs> I was in. Uh, I'm just trying to guess. <laughs> I uh, similar story to, to Marcus with a. You didn't go to the Neil no. Diamond. Co- Neil Diamond no. and Pink Floyd. What sort of a panel have I got here? No, but it was a, it was a sit down. Welcome sit to down. Motorhead. <laughs> it was it was a it was a grouchy audience. I was in uh, Glastonbury, one of the mud years, late late nineties. You were seen mud? Well, no, not seen mud. They stood in the mud in the, all that mud, and everybody was oh, right, yeah. sliding around in mud for for days. And it was one of the mud years. I can't remember which one, but my we, I went to see Radiohead, who were my favourite probably, and and my girlfriend got hammered and lay on her back at the back of a hundred thousand people just shouting boring, boring, <laughs> boring, boring. For about an hour, and I was really annoyed, but she was so drunk that there was nothing I could do about it. But then, but then to my absolute joy, seven or eight Japanese girls in sort of wellies and emergency ponchos in a line walking through the mud, holding on to each other for sort of safety and to keep together <laughs> in the mud, all of them trod on her face. <laughs> Next question, please. The boy there with the fondant fancies and the very floral cravat. <laughs> My name's David. Does the team think that dunking biscuits should be introduced as an Olympic sport for London 2012? <laughs> Dunk, what, what a ridiculous and irresponsible question. Should, dun, should dunking biscuits should, should it be introduced... Dunking biscuits. <laughs> dunk, not dunking biscuits. <laughs> should dunking biscuits... <laughs> be, uh, be introduced oh, yeah. as an I Olympic like sport for the, for the... <laughs> should he be? Yeah, I think Dunk- he should. Do you know Duncan? Anyone heard of Duncan Biscuits? <laughs> I think Duncan Biscuits should be at the heart of it. Definitely. <laughs> I've been a big fan of Duncan Biscuits for some time. <laughs> so I liked his second <laughs> album particularly. <laughs> that was a very uh, tricky one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> But don't you think his hair got very fluffy <laughs> towards the end of that period? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but should Duncan Biscuits... Um... Duncan. It's a great name, isn't it? Duncan. Oh, I'd Duncan. love to be called Duncan, Duncan Biscuits. Yeah. Duncan should... Biscuits, well, how do you do? Well, I think what uh, the gentleman there would like to know is should Duncan Biscuits be allowed to be in the Olympics? Well, in the Olympics, no. But if, if you were around at my house and I offered you... Let's say I'm going to offer you a mean biscuit, and by that I'm saying to you... Are we talking about Duncan biscuits? I'm still talking about Duncan biscuits. No, I've I've put a G. I've put a G on the Duncan. You want to talk about Duncan biscuits? Yes, I do. Well, digress if you like. (laughs) 
That's, that is the bane of Duncan Biscuit's life, you realise. <laughs> You're dragging Duncan over the hot <laughs> coals of his childhood. Oh, we're making light of yeah. Duncan Biscuit's and his attempts to be in the, in the Olympics. <laughs> Sorry, Duncan. So yes, there's all the time. time. It Duncan. wouldn't matter, but his specialty is oh, diving. Wait, never mind, everyone. <laughs> Lisa Tarbuck wants to talk about Duncan Biscuit's. <laughs> As if he hasn't, he hasn't had enough pain. <laughs> Let's talk about dunking biscuits then, Lisa. Well, look, if I offered you a rich tea and you were to dunk that and in your own tea, etc., very happy with it. If you were to dunk it in my tea, I wouldn't be happy about it. Mm. Oh, rich tea is a difficult you. one because and, well, that's you have why to, it I has to be it. in and out because, block, it goes into the tea. <laughs> It True. is exactly too like soft to dunk. If you don't, if you don't dunk, dunk a rich tea and just eat it, it can form a perfectly smooth ridge of biscuit <laughs> on your gum that, that remains undiscovered for up to three or four years. I buy, I buy them for and the dunk. And then dunk. you have to have colonic irrigation on That's your gum. That's right. Although yeah. it is very, very thorough irrigation if it's loosening things from your mouth. Correct. <laughs> Rod, anything to say on this subject? Absolutely nothing. Good. I'll tell you what you can do. Well, Lisa, the best dunking is gingers. <laughs> ginger ginger nuts. Yeah, well, you can... Now, ginger nuts. You can leave them in a while, and they'll never... They'll never flop into the tea, never. <laughs> well, I, I, I dispute I've tried that, that with Chris right, Evans then. recently, and he wasn't happy. Lisa's disputing the fact... <laughs> I think that I... your ginger nuts Go are on, not then. getting a drop into the tea. <laughs> <laughs> I t shall I tell you what? This, you, before... <laughs> You know, oh, there's a distant, a there's a distant memory between these two here, isn't it? <laughs> Look at them both. It's a bit, bits of innocent He's giggles. With me. <laughs> now, before we leave this subject, I just want to give uh, you people here, the audience and the listeners, some vital information. <laughs> if you get a penguin, <laughs> penguin bar, not a pe real penguin, <laughs> penguin bar, you know, the biscuit. Yeah. If you nibble off one of the top. The uh, top corner of either end, yeah. you can suck tea through it. <laughs> and it works a treat. Yeah. Yeah. But the Maybe trick is. You could is... capture me thing like that. <laughs> uh, Rod, I'm being Out. serious here. No, get, you, if you can't be able. Out. You boy. Yeah. If you're going to behave like that, you can leave. Now, <laughs> you can suck your tea through the penguin. <laughs> So the little bits you've nibbled off either end of the penguin. Just take a corner off. It's just a little corner off each end. You do end. it with a Kit Kat, too. F shut up. <laughs> you do it with a penguin. Can I come back to Noddy's penguin? I'm giving the information. <laughs> right, that's it. Forget it. We've, we're done with that. If you're difference. not interested in my penguin information, <laughs> just, yeah. my dunking penguin information, then you can all clear off home now. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. Oh. There. I'm getting very annoyed. I'm very cross with you all. Sorry. The, yes, the, uh, the strumpet there with the sailor. <laughs> um, my name's Rose. What does the team think is the best use for junk mail? Um. What does the team think is the best use for junk mail? Well, I bake mine in a pie with fruit and return it to the sender. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what we should all do. Lisa? Um, I think you open the junk mail and you look for the returned envelope... Because at some level, if at least 2,000 people return that mail, it's going to cost them money, isn't it? So at yeah. some level, they're going to have to stop. But I think sometimes if you get one of those nice black pens and write some helpful words on what you're posting back to them, mm. that makes you feel good too. Yeah. <laughs> good idea. Rod. I think that's, that's a great, great idea. idea. I think we should give a round of applause. Yeah. That's a great Bring idea. Down. Thanks very much. Thank you, Lisa. I enjoy it. Rod, <laughs> what do you do with junk mail? I wow potential girlfriends with my knowledge of local pizza deals. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, or, or I wow, I wow workmen with my knowledge of uh, higher purchase schemes on electrical goods in the area. <laughs> Do you have junk mail in in Wolf Rampton? <laughs> we do. We do have junk mail. Yeah. I actually read the junk mail. I do, do you? I, I love looking through the catalogues and seeing things that you can pick spiders up and put them outside That's with. That's not junk mail, is it? Yeah. yeah. Hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can buy a little thing that you put out on the top and pick it up, and, and you can put the cups. Things, you can put a little thing that you put in jars to pick out pickled onions and things like that. A fork. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm going to do what Lisa does now as well. That's a great idea. Send, you know, I know send... someone who puts a um, couple of sheets of lasagna in um, an envelope to make it look thick to go back. 
Ducks. Oh, yeah. But I, I think maybe I'm getting junk mail wrong. Oh, what? Well, send heavy things back yeah. to the people. Yeah, because it costs. So they have to pay extra postage yeah. at the yeah. other yeah. end. So you fantastic, could... better still. Yeah. Oh, it is. If we all did it, it will work, and yeah. it will stop being sent to us. So I send really heavy things back to people. Yeah, yeah. with just a note. This person Marcus, is dead. before we leave this subject, <laughs> I can see that you're Works really interested. I am. I, I see. I'm old-fashioned, Vic. I reply personally to every. <laughs> <issue>. <laughs> Dear Mrs. Trueprint, <laughs> I trust this letter finds you well. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your offer of five sets of prints for one. I've been terribly busy with the children recently, but the garden's looking marvellous. <laughs> right, OK, let's uh, move on to the uh, penultimate question, I think it's got to be. Who's that there? It's the um, Jeremy Paxman lookalike. <laughs> My name's Rob. Does the team think they'd ever try nudism? Does the team think they'd ever try nudism? Well, Noddy, have you ever streaked? And I'm not talking about your underpants. <laughs> I did streak once in... Or maybe I am. <laughs> in, in Brussels on a, on a cold, windy night. On Even a Tuesday more so. Night. <laughs> and people often streak on Brussels. <laughs> of course it was cold, Noddy, of course it was. <laughs> you've had, when you've had that good... <laughs> That good Sunday on the Brussels, there's often, quite often a bit of streaking on the following day. Uh, uh, so anyway, you streaked in Brussels. Yes, and I did get arrested. And I really? Was, yes, and I was thrown in jail for one night. But there was no, nothing was else to week? do in Brussels on a Tuesday. <laughs> Couldn't do it now, could you? Oh, no, right? not a pretty sight now, no. So you were, you were actually captured by the, 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 gendarmerie. the Dutch police? Yeah. They caught you by the gendarmerie. <laughs> Marcus, what do you think about nudism, nudist beaches and the, the oh, such like? Oh, I don't like it. I've, uh, I've tried it once. Um, nudism? I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, was changing to get my pyjamas on and I uh, caught sight of myself in the mirror and I, since then I've kept the same clothes on. <laughs> See, what, what I do is I get changed. I never bathe. No, no. In the, in the Famous new, I, for that. I Mortimer my, warned me. I keep my trousers on at all times. Yeah. And I've never changed my trousers, ever. Mm. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> have you ever tried nudism? Would you? Or do you? Um, I think I really ought to say, yes, I go on nudist holidays. You every, don't? So I do. Really? Yeah, I'm a Honestly? big advocate for nudism. Really? No. <laughs> Although I do think the British are a bit sort of tight regarding sort of bodies and all that sort of thing. Quite right too. You know, get over it. I, okay, I must say, I did. This is perfectly true. I lived. Uh, I had a house, a oh, yeah. weekend house, at the beach. Yeah. In uh, in Sandgate near Folkestone, and there was, a, there was a nudist beach outside, and there was hardly any nudists there at all, apart from three men. Very, very old men who used to go and, to be polite, they'd wash their tackle in the surf. <laughs> and they used to, three of them, three old, old men would mm. sit there and just let the <coughs> waves lap over their. It is their usually, it is usually old people that are nudist. They, and they play volleyball and, uh, mm. and it tennis is, and things like that. Th anything that makes it all flop about, do not they? But it's never an attractive, youthful sort of thing. You know, not the sort of thing that, that Carry On films would make you think. That might happen. Well, yeah, that was I the agree. year you the gave up snorkeling, it. wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the thing that made me take it up. <laughs> Rod, do people. Well, I. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> no, in Wales. No, no. <laughs> Are there nudists in Wales? <laughs> Has anyone ever been nude in Wales? I think, I think there are, because they're nice little secluded coves. But I've been sitting here thinking is nudism the right word? Isn't it nudity? Surely nudism is prejudice against nude people, isn't it? <laughs> Surely. You, you know you've got a point, yeah. to point. Think, You're being nudist. I, no, exactly. <laughs> well, I've been... How dare you say that? I've That's been, a nudist comment. I, yeah. And I, I have been sat here wondering while you've been chatting whether I am actually nudist or not. It's not something I've faced up to before. Well, but I think then you're I thought, the only one who's... Uh, uh, well, because uh, I think we'll all agree that we're all nudist. Yeah. <laughs> We are, 
under these but under nudism. these clothes, I'm we're not all, all guilty of nudism. No, I see. I was thinking, am I prejudiced against nude people? And I thought, if two people came to my house to, for example, perchance mow my lawn or clear out a shed, a menial task, and one of them was naked and one of them wasn't, I would probably employ the one with clothes. Nudism, yeah. nudism. You tell me, Vic. Well, I think that's a fantastic a... point, and I think we've, we're, we're going to, now. Thank you for that. We're going to end with my final question, and it's my personal question. Does the team think that mediums should be put to a better use, i.e., being able to find out what's in a tin where the labels <laughs> gone, <laughs> and not any of this police work? <laughs> I want to know when I get a tin when the label. You know when I get it cheap. <laughs> and the label's off. Should mediums be employed for that sort of purpose? What do you think about mediums, Marcus Brigstock? I think that's a lovely idea, getting them to, to find out what meat or vegetable matters in the tin. But I, I think... With it might be oil. You just don't could know. Could be oil, yeah. Could be Fruit. anything. Um, a job for a tin opener. <laughs> Yeah. I, think, I think the cost of renting a medium is more than the cost of opening the tin. <laughs> Mediums, they always seem to pick on somebody who's famous. Like, there's, it's always Cleopatra or John Lennon. Why don't, why don't an electrician appear or a plumber? Because it's not fun, is it? Yeah, but I could tell you then what's wrong with your electric fork. Well, and... <laughs> which is exactly why I say, should they not be employed to tell you what's inside? I agree with you, Vic. You know, I do. Let's, let's put mediums to the test. Rod, do you, do you have mediums think... in Wales? <laughs> <laughs> They're mostly large, as you know, but... I don't know, I'd be quite useful, I think. We get a lot of stray cats in my street coming in out and, and looking sort of... Um, well, they just give you that look, don't they, that suggests, <laughs> says, feed me. It'd be quite useful if somebody could tell me whether they actually had eaten before coming to my place. <laughs> also, right. also, it would be quite useful to know if my Elvis Lives hat is ever really going to come into fashion again. <laughs> My lords and ladies, I hope you've taken some portion of contentment <laughs> from the answers to your vital questions tonight and will keep them sealed in Tupperware forever. I know I will. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>